Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So today we're going to be building a REST API using the tools. Uh, so we're going to be using Fast API, which is a framework that allows us to build web APIs in a fast and easy to learn way. We're also going to be using Bini, which is an asynchronous Python object document mapper or an ODM. So we're also going to be using MongoDB since we are working with an ODM and uh, ODM you're going to actually use is Bini, which is an asynchronous ODM. So without further ado, let us get started. I'm going to begin by introducing what we're actually going to be building. So we're going to be building a simple CRUD API or an application programming interface. So we're going to be using Fast API and Bini with MongoDB. So let us try to plan what we're actually going to be building. So within my VS code right here, I'm going to create a simple file and I'm going to call this our readme.md. And within our readme.md file, we are simply going to describe the kind of API we're going to be building. So we're going to basically create this and we're just going to call it the task API or simply a task API or a simple CRUD API for tasks. And I'm just simply going to come here and what I have to do is to say that this is a simple uh, simple CRUD app for tasks. And once we have this then the next thing is going to be to describe the various endpoints that we shall need. So I'll make sure I add uh, the other things I'll need to add to this description which you'll find on my GitHub and let us get started. So we're going to describe the endpoints that we shall have for our API. So I'm just going to create a second heading here and this will be our endpoints. So it's going to be our heading. So when we preview this, we can be able to have something like this. So the first endpoint we're going to have is one for getting all the tasks. So just like you know how REST works, we have different endpoints that provide us with different responses that we can access using various HTTP methods. Now I'm going to describe that in the following way. So the first method we're going to actually have is going to be a get method and this get method is going to allow us to get all tasks. So what I'm going to do is to describe our URL. So in this case I'll transform this into a table when uploaded into GitHub but to save time I'm going to just basically do it in this way. So we're going to specify that this is going to be a get, a get request and it's going to be on the slash tasks URL and we shall provide a description so we shall just simply call this get all tasks and this is the URL from which we are going to get all our tasks. So we are also going to have one for post which is going to be sending data to our server and this is also going to be on the same URL so shall have slash tasks and this will be for creating a task. Now that we have this then the next one we're going to have is going to be the route for retrieving a single task. So we shall make this be on the slash tasks slash and then we shall provide the task ID. So shall provide a task ID here and this will be for retrieve a task. So shall provide an ID and that will help us to basically get our task from our database. Now the third method or our fourth method in this case is going to be put which is going to be updating or fully updating a resource or our object that shall have on our database head. Now I'm going to basically call this slash task and then slash ID. So this will be task ID and then this is going to be for update so it will be update task and then we shall have one that's going to finally delete our tasks. It will be the same URL here so I'll just copy this and then paste it here and then we shall finally call this delete delete task. Now the way I've written these various descriptions are the same ways I'm going to use to write the methods or the various functions that are going to actually handle for us those requests. So let us get started and set up our project. So when I go in our preview right here, we actually have this it kind of looks untidy, but I'll tidy it up when I'm uploading the code to GitHub. So I'm going to close this and when I close, the next thing is going to be to set up our project. Now we haven't yet created a virtual environment, but we're going to create one and the virtual environment is actually going to help us to keep 
our requirements as we're going to need them for our project. Now I'm going to open up my terminal right here. I'm on Windows and I'm using Git Bash, but feel free to use whatever you may want. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a virtual environment with Python minus M venv and then env. So on Linux you may run something like Python 3 minus M venv and then env. So this will go ahead and create a folder called env that will store all our project dependencies. Now that our virtual environment has been created, let us go ahead and activate it with source. So this will be source and I'm going to call env and then shall go into the script folder and then I'll call the activate script. So this will go ahead and activate our virtual environment. Now let's go ahead and install whatever we need. So we're going to need the following things. We're going to install, so I'll begin by installing fast API. And then we're going to install UVCon, which is going to help us to run our first API server asynchronously. So we'll just, just call UVCon. And then we're also going to install Bini, which is going to be our ODM. So I'm just going to come and say install Bini. And that is what we shall need. So I'm just going to simply press enter. And this will go ahead and install our project dependencies. Now that our dependencies have been installed, let us go ahead and set up our first API. So we need to begin by setting up a simple first API server that's going to actually run our application. So I'm going to control L to clear my terminal. And the first thing I'll do is to come right here. I'll create a new file and I'm going to call this file our run py. So run.py is going to be the file that's going to be responsible for running our application. So just simply going to close our terminal for now. And since we're using our virtual environment, I'll actually show Python or the VS Code extension for Python that the Python we're going to use is one that's specific to our virtual environment. Now this is helpful as it's going to help us to have auto completions for the different tools that we're going to use within our project. So right after installing our tools, let us actually go ahead and do an extra step. So we are going to freeze all our requirements to our requirements.txt file. So I'll do that with pip freeze and then I'll point to our requirements dot txt. So I'll just simply correct this. So me enlarge the text a little bit. And this is going to go ahead and create a requirements.txt file in here as well as to write all the requirements. So I'll press enter. And right now we can see that all the dependencies for our project have been written within our requirements.txt file. Now that we are done with that, let us go ahead and try to run our Python server. So I'm going to start by basically stating how we're going to run this app. So I'll just first import UVCon, which is going to be our web server that will help to serve our first API application. So I'll begin by importing UVCon. So I'll just say import UVCon. And after importing UVCon, I'll say if name 
is equal to main I am simply going to run our server so I'm just going to call uvcon and then I'll call the run function so this run function is going to have different uh, variables or different it's going to actually take in different arguments so the first argument I'm going to basically provide is going to be the reload option because we need to run our server and reload it so we shall specify this to be true and then we're also going to provide debug so that we get some of the errors that we shall have so we shall also have this as true and now the next thing we shall also specify is the app that we're going to run asynchronously now you can expect us to provide an instance to our app variable or any variable that may stand for our asgi application so in this case i'll just come and say app and in this case our app is going to be our main app so i'm going to create a module right here which i'm going to call main dot py and within here is where we are actually going to create our first api instance so to create our first api instance we're going to need to first import the first api class so i'll do that with from first api it's actually going to be first api we're going to import our first api and right after importing our first api now we're going to go ahead and create our first api instance and once we have this we can add some extra arguments so let's leave it for now and once you have this now all we need to do is to point to this specific first api instance now i can choose to use black to format my code now that you go ahead and install black within our virtual environment but i'll have to close it for now so once you have that then all i'm going to do is to go to run.py and then specify that the app instance we're going to use is going to be the app instance located in our main module folder mid module right here so once we've done that now we need to just come and say that the app instance we're going to use is going to be main and then app so when i go ahead and save this uh hoping that our black is installed our black has actually been installed hoping it's been installed within our virtual environment yeah it's actually being installed within our virtual environment now right after installing our black i am just going to simply come and what i have to do is to also freeze that within our requirements so txt or flash cran so i'll just come right here and all i have to do is to say freeze and that will go ahead and freeze it within our requirements so txt now i'm going to kill this terminal so what we're going to do right now is to run our server so if i come right here and say python3 run.py so it's actually going to be python i'm on windows so shall so just run python and then run.py now this is going to run our server at localhost 8000 so now we've been able to successfully start our first api server now the next thing we're going to do is to set up our routes that are going to help us to basically carry out most of our api requests so to do that i'll have to separate our logic into a router that's specific to tasks now this is helpful in case our project gets large that we may need to use routers to specify functionality different or to organize all our logic for different functionalities into different modules as we're going to see so i'm going to close our terminal right here when i go back to our main.py i'm actually going to close everything now i'm going to create our file or our module which i'm going to call tasks py now within our task.py we're going to create our router and then go ahead and include it within our app so to do that i'll, ha I'll have to import the api router class from first api so i'm going to do that with from first api we are going to import our api router and right after doing that then we are going to go ahead and create a router specific to tasks now in case you have maybe authentication you'll be able to create a router and then include it onto the main application so that you can be able to separate your logic now to do that i'll just come and say we're going to have our task router and this task router is going to be an api router so once you have this then all we're going to do is to create the different 
task endpoints that we're going to use for this video. I'm going to go ahead and save this and when I save now black is working that's why you see my code is being formatted good so for this to work to actually auto save and auto format you have to basically check out the format on save command or the format on save <laughs> setting in VS Code. Alright so now that I've done this I'm going to go ahead and basically create our routers. So just like we mentioned in our readme.md, we're going to actually use this same task, same, same format. So I'll begin by creating our first route or our first endpoint. So this is going to be at task router. So we're going to call that get method right here. And in this case, you can be able to provide the URL, which is going to be on our slash. Now, the reason that's why I'm leaving this on slash is because we are going to set up a prefix for our tasks endpoints, just like we're going to see. So I'm just going to come here and all I have to do is to provide the function or the request handler function that will handle the request when you visit this endpoint. So I'm just going to come and say async def, and this is actually going to have the name of this URL right here. I'll just come and paste it and then basically say this is going to be our get all tasks and now I'm simply going to come and pass this so once we have this we now have handled one we will have handled only one URL or one endpoint on our API so what I'm going to do is to come and copy this and paste it uh, multiple times for the methods we have we have five methods and now going to paste it for the fourth time, the fifth time. So for the next one, so this is actually going to be for getting all tasks. Now I'm going to also create one for creating a task. Now this is going to be app.post and this will also be on the same endpoint. So the method will be called create a task. Now we're also going to do the same thing for retrieving a task. So I'll have to come and copy this URL right here. I have to basically paste it in here. So it's actually going to be get all tasks given the task ID and the view function we shall also need the task ID. Now we're going to use type hints to decide which type this is going to be as we're going to see. So I'll have to first set up Bini to explain that. So what I'm going to do is also do the same thing. So this is actually going to be for retrieving a task. I'll copy that method name right here. And we shall just come and say that this is going to help us to retrieve a task. Now, actually, this is going to be for retrieving a task, which is going to be under this function. And now we're going to come and say it's going to help us to update a task. and we shall also have one for deleting a task now this is going to be app or router.put we shall also have to provide the same url just like we've done here and another thing we're going to do is to basically delete a task so i have to change the request handler function right here now this is going to be delete and here we shall just have our URL as task slash task ID. Now that we've been able to set up our routes, let us go ahead and register them into our main application. So to do that, I'm going to go to our main.py right here. And what we shall do is to call a special method on our app instance that's going to allow us to include our routers. So to do that, I'm just simply going to come and say app.include router and then I have to import our router so I'll go at the top of our code and all I have to do is to import our task router so I'll say from from tasks I'm going to go ahead and import our task router and once you have that I'll just come and simply add it here so I'll say we're going to have our task router and that is going to be enough to add it to our route. Now, since we specified reload to true, our server will wish that each time we shall have changes in our app files. So once we have this, now let us go ahead and set up our database. Now, right here, I have a tool called MongoDB Campus that's going to allow me to have a client to my MongoDB. You can use MongoDB the way you want, but I'm using this GUI client called MongoDB Campus. So 
it can be able to help us to see our databases and collections and so on so another thing we're going to do is to set up bini so bini is an asynchronous odm that helps us to work with mongodb it's very simple to use and in this video i'm going to be showing you how we can use it to create read update and delete our task resources so the way we're going to do that is by creating a simple file right here so i'm going to create a file that i'm going to call our database.py and right now this file is going to be the one that's responsible for connecting to our mongodb database but before before we go to creating our mongodb database bini works in a way that we need to create models so models are classes that help us to define how we want each of our databases or each of the collections that we need or documents because this is actually a no sql document that define how each of our documents are going to have data in our database so let us go ahead and first define a document now to do that i'm going to come and create a new file which i'm going to call models.py and within our models.py i'll go ahead and create our document so the beauty with bini is you do not have to write separate pydantic models and separate database models therefore we have to write uh, document classes that are similar to the way we create pydantic data validation classes as we're going to see so to create our to create our document i'm just going to go ahead and import our bini so i'm just going to come and say from bini we're going to import our document class and right after importing our document class let us go ahead and create our task document so to create our class we're going to create a class of task and this class is going to inherit from the document class from bini and once you have this now let us go ahead and specify which kinds of fields we want on each of our documents now we're going to have the task content so each task is going to have a task content and this will be a string now if you're noticing this is actually similar to how we do write data validation classes with pydantic i actually have a video on pydantic please check it out i'll leave the link down in the description so let's go ahead and define other attributes so we shall have the dot is complete which is just to show if a, spe if a specific task is actually complete now this is actually going to be a boolean and now we can go ahead and also provide the data to which you created this so we can say the date created and this is going to be a date time object so i'm going to use uh, vs code to complete this for me and it will import date time right here so we can even use other attributes from fast api for example we can import the field class so i can just come and say it's actually from pydantic so i can just come and say from pydantic we're going to import our field function so using field you can basically provide other validations for example we can say that our task content is going to be a field and this field can have a max length of let's say 400 so let's say we want our characters to be 400 characters now i'm going to go ahead and save so we have the task content we have the is complete we have the date created now that we have this we can also go ahead and basically set up our database so i'm going to create a simple class right here and i'm going to call this class our config class so i'm going to have a have this class as config and this config is going to have a description of how we may want to set these things up so that we may be able to use our swagger ui in a good way so i'm going to begin by setting up our schema extra and this is going to be a dictionary that's simply going to show a demo of the data that shall be dealing with now here i'm going to come and say that we shall need the task content it's actually going to be the task content and the task content in this case is going to be let's say a sample title or let's say a sample content and then we shall have is complete so in this case we shall have is complete and here we shall have the value of true and then we can also have a date created 
So this can be a date time object, which is going to be date time dot now. All right. So now that we have this, let us go ahead and also specify which name our database is going to be. So I'm going to create a class right here, and I'm going to simply call this our settings class. And right here, I can just provide the name of our database. So I can just come and say that our name of our database is going to be equal to our tasks database. Now that we have this, let us go ahead and define how we shall connect to our Mongo using bin. So I'm going to go to our database.py right here. Now, since uh, Bini. Bini relies so heavily on Moto, which is an asynchronous driver for MongoDB. So we're going to begin by importing Mo Moto. So I'm going to come and say import Moto. And then we are going to also import the async IO driver for Moto. So I'll just come and say import Moto dot Moto async IO. And right after doing this, now since Moto runs asynchronously, we need to create a coroutine that's going to define how we shall create our client which we shall then use to connect to our mongodb so i'm going to define an async function here or a coroutine and i'm going to call this connect to db or let's actually just call it init db and this is going to allow us to connect to our database now the first thing we shall need is to create a client and this client is going to be an object that shall help us to connect to our MongoDB with Moto. So the way I'm going to do this is by creating a variable, which I'm going to call a client. And this is going to be equal to Moto dot Moto async IO. Then we shall import our async IO Moto client. Now within our async IO Moto client, we are going to define the URL to our MongoDB. Now I'm running MongoDB on localhost, but you can feel free to run MongoDB using a remote URL. So you can use something like MongoDB Atlas and so on. So what I'm going to do is to come right here and I'll just specify our MongoDB URL to be equal to mongodb and then we shall provide our local host and then the port which is going to be 370 and then 17. Right after doing this now the next thing is going to be to go ahead and use this client with bini to initialize our database. Now I'm going to come right here and all I have to do is to call bini dot init bini and here we shall have to provide the following. So the first thing we're going to provide is going to be our database, which is going to be an async IO Moto database. Now, since we have created a client, this client contains all the information about the database that we shall be creating. So I'll just come right in here. And all I have to do is to say that our database is going to be equal to our client dot db name which is the name of the database we will have created with our client right here. And now the next thing we shall have to do is to specify the document models, which are basically document classes that we created with Bini. So just because we've created one, which is task, we're going to have to import it. So I'll just come and say from, uh, from models, we are going to import our task class. And right after importing our task class, now let us go ahead and basically provide it in our document models. So I'll just come and say document models. This will be a list and it will have our document model, which is task. Now, if you have more than one document model class, you'll have to first register it within our list of document models for this to work. Now I'm going to go ahead and save. Now we've been able to save and the next thing is going to be to specify how our app is going to connect to our MongoDB. Now first API allows us to basically be able to track or carry out some events in case there is something that has happened. Now we can listen to events such as the app starting and the app shutting down. For example, what I'm going to do is to go to our main.py where we have our first API instance. Now what I'm going to do in this case is to basically go ahead and listen for an event. So I'm just going to come and say at app dot on 
event and in this case we shall provide the event type so in this case we are listening to the start app event and once you have this now we're going to define a handler for this function so I'm just simply going to provide this as an async function so I'll just call this uh, connect and once you have this as connect now such that you're going to have defined <laughs> And once we have this as connect, now we shall have to call our our <coughs> we shall have to call our coroutine that defined as any db right here, so that we be able to connect to our Mongo each time we start our first API server. Now to do this, we shall have to call it with an await syntax. So I'll have to first import it. So I'll say from database. Sorry for this. So this is going to be from database. We're going to import our so that will actually be our init db function. And right after having it, now we shall just come and say we're going to import our init db and call it. Now hoping our server is starting and our server is actually reloading. So in this case, we've been able to run and we are seeing that we are we never awaited our init bini, so I'll just go back to our database.py because this is actually also a sync. I'll just come and say await db. Now our server has run, so we've been able to connect to uh, our bini. So let us go ahead and try to implement our API endpoint. So I'm going to close this and close this and close this. Now since bini works in an asynchronous way, it expects us to do things in an asynchronous way. For example, if we are querying for a specific attribute or querying for specific uh, values or resources from our database we shall have to call them via await so let us go ahead and start with getting all our tasks now remember at this point we don't have any task in our database so for us to be able to query for our task we're going to use bini to do that so i have to first import our document model class that we created so i'm just going to come and say from models we are going to import our task class and once after importing our task class I'm simply going to come right here and say that our tasks are going to be equal to so in this case we're going to call our await so I'm just going to come and say await and then we shall call our task class so we're going to call the method of find so there is the find method there's also the find all method so we're going to call that a find all method and this is called with an await because it's also a coroutine now since we want this to be returned as a list we shall have to call another method onto it so we're going to call that dot to list and once we have this now we shall also specify the return type for this function since first api allows us to use type hints which are really interesting to work with so i'm just going to come and import actually i'm not going to import because all we have all we want to have is this so what i'm going to come is to maybe import the list class from typing i'll just come and say from typing we are going to import our list class and once after importing our list now we're going to specify that this function is going to return a list of instances of the type of our task Alright, so once we have this, now let's just go ahead and return our tasks. So I'm just simply going to come and say return tasks. Now I'm going to save this and hoping that our server is running right here. So yeah, let me stop my server and try to run again. So once our server is started, I'm going to go to my Insomnia right here. So I'm using Insomnia as our testing client for our API. I'll create a new HTTP request. So I'm just going to call this get all tasks. And once I have it, I'm just going to create. So I'll specify that our server, since our server is running on localhost 8000, just going to come here and say, we're going to run our server on localhost 8000. And now, and another thing we actually forgot is to specify how our server is running on our on our tasks prefix so i'm going to come here and i'll provide it within our so just simply come within our router 
it's actually going to be within our main.py so here we have to include our router we shall take in the api router instance as well as the prefix on which that router will be so in this case i'm just going to come and say that shall have our prefix and this prefix is going to be the slash tasks prefix so i'm going to go ahead and save now we see that our server is restarting so once our server has restarted i'm going to go to our insomnia right here now localhost 8000 slash tasks and then send so we see could then connect to server it seems like our server has stopped let us try to run again so we couldn't connect to the server it seems like we have a problem with the server here so it seems like we are failing to connect to mongodb let us see what the problem is here so we are seeing no connection could be made because the target machine actively refused it let's try to stop the server with control and c and then see why we're having this error so i'm going to basically copy this and go to stack overflow just like any other developer out there so we have pymongo.errors.service timeout so setting um, actually that port i think is 270.17 let me try to see so it seems like we are on the wrong port or something the port is actually 27017 so let me try to close this and then go where we had the database so within our client we are going to change our number from 2370 to 27017 all right so i'm going to run our server again with python run.py when you go back to our insomnia right here hoping that this time it's going to work we now see that it's actually returning an empty list of tasks. So at this point, we've been able to basically return a list of tasks from our database or our MongoDB. So let us go ahead and also try to create a task. So for us to create a task, I'm going to close our terminal right here, close our database file, close main.py. Now all our focus is actually going to be here. So when you are creating a task, we are going to need data from whatever client will be sending this data to our to our API. So we need this to be in the form of our task model. Now, whatever client is going to actually make requests to this API is going to send them in the form of JSON, but that JSON has to be in form of type task or the type of the task class that we have here so let us go ahead and be able to specify that now I'll come right here within our create task handler function and all i have to do is to specify that shall have a task and this task is going to be of type task now now that we have this we can go ahead and create our task by simply calling this so we can just come and say await and in this case i can just come and say task dot create and this will be just enough to create our task now in this case i'll just come and specify which kind of response to return so i'll just come and say return and i'll just simply return a message and this message is going to tell us that task has been saved now just like that we've been able to basically go ahead and create a task within our mongodb now this is the one the beautiful thing about using bini as our odm for our first api project now i'm going to go ahead and save now let us go ahead and create a task using our insomnia so right here in insomnia i'll create a new request sorry for this so it's going to be our new request and we shall call this create a task and when we have this it's going to be a post request 
and it's going to have the body which we shall be in JSON so I'll go ahead and create this now once I have this I'll just come and provide our localhost 8000 slash tasks now we have to have a task content so in this case I'll come and provide that task content it's actually going to be task content and the value of this will be a string so let us just say uh, uh, let's say uh, do the laundry and this will have uh, let's actually go ahead and specify the tasks so within when you go back to our models.py we specify that task our date created to be a date time now we can provide the default so I can just come and say uh, the default for this case is actually going to be date time dot now so that you don't have to actually set it for ourselves and you can also set this boolean to be equal to false at the start of this uh, creation so when you go ahead and save this I'm going to go back right here so we are going to create our task so when I go to insomnia right here all we have to do is to maybe provide our is complete so I'll just provide is complete and maybe say this is going to be equal to false and when I go ahead and post this, we're now going to see that our task has been saved. So let us try to get all tasks. Now we see that our tasks have been, our task has actually been saved to our MongoDB database. Now this is the beauty with using MongoDB with Bini. We write less lines of code and be able to achieve something which is beautiful. So let us go ahead and try to retrieve a task. Now if you observe and try it here, instead of having an integer kind of ID we are having this kind of weird string now this is what we call an object ID so MongoDB saves its IDs as object IDs instead of integer IDs now if we are actually retrieving a task what we're actually going to do next we shall need to use the object ID instead of using an integer ID so we're going to go ahead and specify that so Bini provides for us a class which is from Pydantic and that is going to be our Pydantic object ID so we can be able to use that as a type that will help us to basically retrieve our tasks so I'm going to go ahead and import it so I'll just come here and say from from Bini dot actually it's going to be from Bini we shall just come and import our Pydantic object ID and once you have our Pydantic object ID I'll just come and all I have to do is to basically retrieve our task with our task ID. Now if I had to use type hints in this case, we are actually going to say that our task ID is going to be of type pydantic object ID. And once you have pydantic object ID, now it's going to be a simple task to get our task. <laughs> I actually repeated myself there so I'm just going to come right here and I'll create a task so I'll just simply call this task to get and in this case it's going to be equal to so we shall just need to call our task class and this is actually going to be with our await since we're going to call a core routine so we're going to say task and in this case we shall say task dot get it's actually going to be our task class sorry for that so shall call a get method and once you call the get method now shall just have to provide a document ID which is going to be of type pedantic object ID so I'll just simply come and say that this is going to be our task ID and then we shall simply come and return our task to get now if you're using type hints you can also go as far as specifying what you are going to return in this case shall just come and say we are just simply going to return our task so let us go ahead and try to test this endpoint so I'm just going to come right here within Isomia I'll create a new request which I'll call retrieve a task and this is actually going to be a get request so I'll create it and here I'll just come and say localhost uh, 8000 and in this case I'll just simply come and say it's going to be on slash tasks now instead of providing an ID integer such as such as slash one we shall have to provide a, a, 
an object ID so I'll just come right here and try to copy it so just come right here and copy this object ID and right after copying it I'll just simply come and provide it right here so when I send we now see task is not found syncs I think I copied it wrongly let me try to see it is actually took me a time to realize that I made a huge mistake. So the mistake I did was to leave the slash task URL and yet we also have the task the slash task. So when I show you the main.py file, we have the slash tasks prefix. So it would be something like slash task and then slash task and then the ID of the task. So what I have to do is to go ahead and remove this. So I'll use Ctrl D to highlight it throughout the document so i'll just come and remove this so it's going to be on slash task id and i'm going to save and at this point i think we are good to go so when i go back to our insomnia right here and try to send we now see that our object is being returned and we are safe and we are good to go so let us go ahead and try to update our document so we're going to update our document i'm just going to come here so this is going to help we're going to need two things we shall need the task to update or the data we are going to use to update the task as well as the task id so i'm going to start by providing our task id so i'll just come here and provide our task id as task so this is actually going to be the data of the task and this will be of type task now this also it's actually going to be within our update task so we're going to say task and this will be of type task and then we shall also need a task id which is going to be of type integer now that you have this the first thing we're going to do is to try to search for the item we want to update i'm just simply going to come right here and all i have to do is to say task to update and this is going to be equal to task dot get and in this case shall provide the id so it's actually not going to be an id but it's going to be a pydantic object id so once we have this as our object id i'll just simply come right here and say that we're going to have our pydantic object id now that we have this let's go ahead and try to check if it does not exist we need to return an http exception so what i'm going to do is to say if not task to update in this case what are we going to do we're going to raise an exception so i'm just going to come right here and say raise oh sorry for this so this is going to be raise and this is going to be our http exception so let's come and say that we're going to have our http exception from first api and this is going to have a status code now if you're wondering i'm using vs code that's going to auto import that for me just like you see here it has been imported so when i go back right here i'll have to just come and say that we're going to have our status And this is going to be a status code. Now this status code is going to be uh, equal to, so we shall just come and say it's going to be 404. And then we can also provide the detail, which is going to give us a description. And this will be a resource not found. So once you have this thing, let us go ahead and try to update our task. So to update our task is going to be easy. So since we have the task already got here, what we can do is to just say task dot. In this case, we can just say task to update dot. So in this case, let's say we have dot uh, the task content. If we are to update the task content. So in this case, we shall just come and say task content and that will be equal to our task dot task content now that we have that we can also go ahead and update our is complete so we can just come and say task to update dot is complete it's going to be equal to so right now we can just come and say task dot is complete and right after doing that now i'll shall we shall just come and say task dot save so we'll just come and say task to update dot save 
which is finally going to go ahead and save our updated task to our database now we also need to specify what we're going to return and in this case we can just come and say return our task to update now let us go ahead and save this now we can specify things such as the return type and this can be our task right here so now go ahead and save uh, let us try to test this endpoint so that when you go right here we're going to create an http request which is going to be for updating our task and when you have this for updating our task i'm simply going to change this to be a put request and here we shall need our body as json so when i create it I'm going to provide that url as localhost 8000 slash tasks and we shall provide our document id which is the same as the one we use for retrieving that specific task now we shall also need to provide our body here which is going to be json so let's say we need to have a task content being let's say uh, updated task and in this case we can also have the is complete and here we shall just basically provide maybe true and after doing this i'll simply go ahead and send so it seems like we have an error so let us try to see what that error is so this is a coroutine object so it seems like we've done a mistake here so i'm just going to come and say um how have we got our object so here we have task to update which is a coroutine object so to get this we actually needed to call it within our wait so when i save this and try to send we still have an error here so let us try to debug this so we now have our id id must be an instance of byte string or object id not class type so it seems like we have an error here so let me try to find out what this is so here we have id must be instance of that let me try to see here so this is actually where we're getting our task so let us try to see task not get identical oh we actually provided the type here we're supposed to provide our task id now let me try to undo some of the things i've done here in our task and save now when you try to update our task here we now see that our task has been updated even when you try to get this task right here we're going to see that it's actually saying do the laundry wonder why it's not updating let's try to see let's try to see Task to update dot save and then we shall return the task to update let's try to see here so i'll try to use that docs for my good so we have something like finding and then setting the attribute and then we say await task dot save so let's try to see we actually never awaited this so let me try to await it and save so i think it was the error we are having here coroutine wasn't awaited so let us try to go ahead and run our update task so when i go ahead and save saying updated task now when you try to get all tasks you see now our task has actually been updated so the last thing we're going to do is to delete our task so to be able to delete our task i'm just going to come right here and we're just simply going to copy this query so just going to come and copy this query and basically paste it here so in this case it's not going to be the task to update but it's going to be the task to delete and this is actually going to be the same thing so we shall need to pass our task id within our function and this will be of type by identic object id all right now that we have this now let us go ahead and delete it so deleting is as simple as saying task delete 
so shall have to await this and here we're just going to come and call that delete method and this will go ahead and delete our task so we're just simply going to return uh, task not delete task deleted so we can even specify the status codes and stuff like that so I can just sum and say uh, message task deleted and save so when I when I go ahead and save let us try to see if the our task has been deleted so I'll try to create more tasks go here and create more tasks so that we actually have more tasks so when I go here and try to run we see that we have more documents created so when I try to delete a task I'm just going to come here and all I have to do is to say that we're going to have our uh, delete a task and I'll just simply call this a delete delete request and this is going to be on localhost 8000 slash uh, tasks so shall have the same object ID so when I send in this case we're going to have task deleted but this should return an error of 204 so I'm going to try to refer to the docs of first API to see what we shall return so now we have a uh, query parameters request body path parameters body parameters uh, response status codes so now we can actually provide a status code in here within our route so what I have to do is to specify here that we're going to have a status code of 204 which is going to return any body with this request it's actually status code of 204 no content now within our task router dot put here we shall just return a status code of 200 and for creating our task so the same thing here we shall have our status code status code of 200 and for creating our task we need to provide a status code of 201 created so I'm just going to come and say status code and in this case it's going to be 201 we shall do the same thing here for our get of get request of all our tasks so this is going to be sta status code of 200 now I'm going to go ahead and save this so the next thing we're actually going to see is our swag UI so when you go to our localhost 8000 in our browser it's going to go to our localhost 8000 and in, the, in this case we shall have to access the docs URL and here we shall see our first API that has finally generated for us a beautiful Swagger documentation that we're actually using to basically create or document our API so when you go right here we can be able to try it out and when you execute we see that all our documents are being returned but there is one thing that you actually need to document and that is the title as well as the description of our API so I'm going to go back right here and all I have to do is to go to our main and then within our first API instance I'm just simply going to provide the following I'll begin with the title so we can call this the task list API and now we can provide a description so we can just come and say uh, we can just come and say that the description and we can say this is a simple API for a task service so maybe let's say for a task service when you save and go back right here we now see that our API has been documented at the bottom right here we see the different models that we have so we actually have the validation error we also have our task error that has our task model that actually has all the models or that actually has all the fields that we've defined using our bini
So in this video, we've been able to look at how to develop a simple REST API using FastAPI, MongoDB, and the Bini ODM. I hope you've enjoyed and learned from this video. If you've enjoyed and learned from this video, please hit like. That encourages me to create more of these videos. I hope you've learned with me and see you in the next video. Bye.